In our study of Daniel chapter 11, we look at the prophetic rise of the Antichrist as well as his failure and fall as contained in the Book of Truth and revealed to Daniel by an angel from God. However, I was already standing up to support and help Dariavesh the Mede in the first year of his reign. We see that God has once again positioned Daniel and, as the time of the Babylonian captivity drew to a close, Daniel was serving Darius the head of the Media Persian Empire. What I am going to tell you now is true. Three kings will arise in Persia, followed by a fourth, who will be far wealthier than all of them, and when he has grown strong by means of his wealth, he will stir up everyone against the kingdom of Greece. At the end of chapter 10, the angel told Daniel what was written in the Book of Truth concerning the last days. Now, Daniel begins to tell us what the angel showed him which is the fact that four kings of Persia would rise with the last being wealthier than all of the rest of them. In our world today, power or strength is also related to how wealthy someone is and we see that this Iranian ruler will have power because of his wealth. With this power, the ruler will wage war against Europe. Then a powerful king will appear who will rule a vast kingdom and do whatever he pleases. But once he appears, his kingdom will be broken up and divided to the four winds of heaven. It won't be inherited by his descendants, and it won't be ruled with the power he had, because his kingship will be uprooted and will pass to others than his own posterity. We see that a ruler will arise out of Europe and he is described as doing whatever he pleases which speaks of pride and the demonic power that is behind him. We see that, once this ruler rises to power, his kingdom will be transformed and spread to the ends of the earth through demonic powers. The king in the south will be strong, and one of his princes will gain power over him and have dominion, his domain will be a great dominion. After a number of years, they will form an alliance. The daughter of the king of the south will approach the king of the north to make an agreement, but she won't retain her power, and he and his power won't last either. Rather, she will be surrendered, along with her attendants, her father and the one who supported her during those times. The southern part of this demonic kingdom will have very strong leaders but they will be concerned about the rise of the northern part and so they will attempt to form an alliance through marriage but the northern ruler will break the agreement and reject the woman. But another branch from the same roots as hers will appear in her father's place. He will attack the army of the king of the north, enter his fortress and succeed in conquering them. He will also carry off as booty to Egypt their gods, their cast metal images and their valuable gold and silver vessels. Then for some years, he will refrain from attacking the king of the north. A child of this woman will become the ruler of this southern kingdom and he will successfully attack and conquer the king of the north. Afterwards, the king of the north will invade the kingdom of the king of the south, but he will retire to his own land. His sons will rouse themselves to muster a large and powerful army, which will advance like a flood passing through. In another campaign, it will march on the enemy stronghold. The king of the south, enraged, will set out to do battle with the king of the north, who, in turn, will muster a large army, but this army will be defeated by his enemy and carried off. The conqueror will grow proud as he slaughters tens of thousands, yet he will not prevail. Rather, the king of the north will again muster an army, larger than the first one, at the end of this period, after a number of years, it will be a large, well-supplied army. We see years of back and forth fighting between these two kingdoms as each rises and falls repeatedly. This is what Yeshua was describing in Mark 13 verse 8 when he said that nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom in the last days. Those will be times in which many will resist the king of the south, and the more violent ones among your own people will rebel in order to fulfill their vision, but they will fail. Then the king of the north will come, set up siege works and capture a fortified city, the forces of the south will be insufficient defense, even his elite troops will not be strong enough to resist. The invader will do as he pleases, no one will be able to withstand him. So he will establish himself in the land of glory, and he will have the power to destroy it. There is a mistranslation here as it says that many will resist the king of the south when, in the original Hebrew, it actually speaks of many standing with the southern kingdom against the king of the north. We see that even some of the Jewish people will stand with this southern kingdom in hopes of establishing the kingdom of Israel. The same sort of thing has happened repeatedly throughout the history of the Jewish people but we know that the security of the land of Israel and the establishment of the kingdom is in the hands of God. This southern kingdom will not be able to stand against the king of the north and, once again, we see that this king will do as he pleases which speaks of the demonic roots of his power. This victory will embolden this ruler to come against the land of Israel and to attempt to destroy it. 
he will determinately advance with the full force of his kingdom, but he will make an agreement with the king of the south and give him a daughter in marriage. His object will be to destroy him, but the agreement will not last or work out in his favor. Next, he will put his attention on the coastlands and islands and capture many, but an army commander will put a stop to his outrages and cause his outrages to come back upon him. After this, he will put his attention on the strongholds in his own land, but he will stumble, fall and not be seen again. We see that this northern ruler will go to Israel and propose an agreement but Israel will reject it and so the ruler will turn his attention to the rest of the nations of the earth to demonstrate his power. We see that a military commander will stop this aggression and cause the king of the north to focus his attention on his own homeland but this king will fade away. In his place will arise one who will send a tax collector through the glorious kingdom, but within a few days, he will be broken, though neither in anger nor in battle. There will arise in his place a despicable man not entitled to inherit the majesty of the kingdom, but he will come without warning and gain the kingdom by intrigue. The ruler that replaces the northern king will impose taxation to gain power but it will be very short-lived and we see a dramatic change as he is replaced by one that suddenly and deceitfully takes over the kingdom. The previous ruler had tried to take over by military force but this new ruler will arise during a time of relative peace. Large armies will be broken and swept away before him, as well as the prince of the covenant. Alliances will be made with him, but he will undermine them by deceit. Then, although he will have but a small following, he will emerge and become strong. We see that this ruler will defeat many nations and other nations will join with him but it is a kingdom that is built upon deceit as he will tell people what they want to hear but it will not be the truth. He will become very powerful but his objective is a very small nation, Israel. Without warning, he will assail the most powerful men in each province and do things his predecessors never did, either recently or in the distant past, he will reward them with plunder, spoil and wealth while devising plots against their strongholds, but only for a time. He will summon his power and courage against the king of the south with a great army, and the king of the south will fight back with a very large and powerful army, but he will not succeed, because of plots devised against him. This ruler will take control of the spiritual leaders of the nation of Israel through bribery by seemingly doing good things to build up the nation but only until it is time to reveal who he really is and what he really wants. During this time, the northern king is going to try to put down the southern kingdom once and for all and the southern kingdom will oppose him but fail in the end. Yes, those who shared his food will destroy him, his army will be swept away, and many will fall in the slaughter. These two kings, bent on mischief, will sit at the same table, speaking lies to each other, but none of this will succeed, because the appointed end will not have come yet. Then the king of the north will return to his own land with great wealth, with his heart set against the holy covenant, he will take action and then return home. The king of the south will fail because of internal strife but we see that they both have evil intent and will try to join together to accomplish their goals but they will not succeed because it is not the time that has been appointed by God. We see that the king of the north will become very rich and his heart will be set on the destruction of the people of God. He will be willing to make war but will return to his home. At the time designated, he will come back to the south. But this time, things will turn out differently than before, because ships from Kittim will come against him, so that his courage will fail him. Then, in retreat, he will take furious action against the Holy Covenant, again showing favor to those who abandon the Holy Covenant. The king of the north will once again go against the south but he will lose heart because of ships on the Mediterranean Sea opposing him. We see that he is totally opposed to the establishment of the kingdom and he will understand what will cause people to leave that holy covenant. Armed forces will come at his order and profane the sanctuary and fortress. They will abolish the daily burnt offering and set up the abomination that causes desolation. Those who act wickedly against the covenant he will corrupt with his blandishments but the people who know their God will stand firm and prevail. We see that a part of his bribery of Israel has been the construction of the temple but, now, he orders his army to abolish the sacrifices. These sacrifices were not pleasing to God but they were a part of the plan to deceive the people of Israel but now the deception is being revealed. At this time, they also set up the abomination that causes desolation but, for the most part, the Jewish people reject it. Those among the people who have discernment will cause the rest of the people to understand what is happening, nevertheless, for a while they will fall victim to sword, fire, exile, and pillage. When they stumble, they will receive a little help, although many who join them will be insincere. 
Even some of those with discernment will stumble, so that some of them will be refined, purified and cleansed for an end yet to come at the designated time. We see that those who understand what is going on will teach the others but they will be persecuted. This will be a period of refinement and purification for them until another time that is designated by God. The king will do as he pleases. He will exalt himself and consider himself greater than any god, and he will utter monstrous blasphemies against the god of gods. He will prosper only until the period of wrath is over, for what has been determined must take place. He will show no respect for the gods his ancestors worshipped, or for the god women worship, he won't show respect for any god, because he will consider himself greater than all of them. In this passage, we actually see what the abomination that causes desolation is talking about and that is the Antichrist elevating himself to be worshipped in the temple in Jerusalem and trying to assume the place of God. This will continue until the outpouring of God's wrath is completed. But instead, he will honor the God of strongholds, with gold, silver, precious stones and other costly things he will honor a God unknown to his ancestors. He will deal with the strongest fortresses with the help of a foreign God. He will confer honor on those he acknowledges, causing them to rule over many and distributing land as a reward. We see that the Antichrist receives his power from Satan and will give power and rewards to those that worship him. When the time for the end comes, the king of the south will push at him, while the king of the north will attack him like a whirlwind, with chariots, cavalry and a large navy. He will invade countries, overrun them and move on. In the end, the southern kingdom will rebel and the Antichrist will unleash his wrath upon many nations as he overruns them. He will also enter the land of glory, and many, countries, will come to grief, but these will be saved from his power Edom, Moav, and the people of Ammon. The Antichrist will once again enter Israel and most of the Jews will be killed during this period of time that is known as Jacob's Troubles. We see three groups that will not face this and they are all people that God does not bless as they stood in opposition to God's plan for the Jewish people. He will reach out his hand to seize other countries too. The land of Egypt will not escape, he will control the treasures of gold and silver, as well as everything else in Egypt of value. Put and Ethiopia will be subject to him. The Antichrist will seize Egypt, Libya, and Ethiopia and all of the wealth of the nations as the king of the south has been defeated. However, news from the east and north will frighten him, so that he moves out in great fury to ruin and completely do away with many. We see that he will become frightened by news from the east and the north but we are not told what that news is concerning. This causes him to unleash his wrath and destroy those who oppose him. Finally, when he pitches the tents of his palace between the seas and the mountain of the holy glory, he will come to his end, with no one to help him. Then, he will set up his palace in Israel for one last attempt to establish his kingdom in the place of the kingdom of God and to be received by the Jewish people. Instead, he will come to an end and the kingdom of God will be established. We hope you've enjoyed this study and we uh, hope that if you'd like more information about any of our studies, you go to our website at mychristianspace.com and we hope to see you back here again. For now, that's all from the Olive Grove.